took a long time to get here, but at last I have a Verno ZG47 in the studio. It's the car by model. I lost track of the number of letters and notes I've received about these rifles. Naturally, I've owned them in the past, but I didn't have any, and I kept looking and finding examples on the web and then I would either put in a bid or something else would come up. Anyway, it took until now to get it into the studio and what an excellent rifle it is. And um, we'll compare it with to the ZKK 601. I've had that around for a while in 308. Um, but maybe I'll just make a brief comment because you're either hunters or shooters or collectors or all three like me. And um, some rifle, rifles just have a certain aspect to them. Sometimes it's the shaping of the stock or the way the action sounds or how it moves and the smoothness. You know, it's a sort of undefined combination of features that make uh, some rifles extraordinary. And here's one of them, uh, the Pre-64 Model 70. This one's in 240 Super Pooper somebody magnificently modified the stock. I always want to sell this rifle, but I end up keeping it just because it, even though it's been so badly rasped and filed and shaped, it shoots like a house on fire. It's a great rifle. This is one of those rifles that's full of intangibles, the Pre-64 Model 70. So I, I brought it out just because I try to reflect a little bit before filming. And getting back to the subject matter, the ZG47 is definitely one of those excellent rifles. And I remember 20 years ago, these were never super common, but they weren't worth a fortune the way they are now. Uh, now I'm not talking thousands and thousands of dollars, but you can easily spend $1,500 or more on a good example. And if you could ever find one in some of the more scarce, scarce calibers, um, well, you have an excellent investment. In other words, you'll never lose money on a ZG-47, but that's not the reason to buy them. They're just exceptional rifles. Um, some of the features, you know, the bolt-mounted safety, some people talk about that uh, being a weakness. But again, uh, whether you're a hunter or a collector or a shooter, um, you don't necessarily have to own the best rifle. Um, it's, it's a little bit like collecting art. What's the best painting? Well, it depends what you like in a painting and your taste changes from day to day. And that's the beauty of collecting and that's why guns, like I think any art form, um, continually continue to fascinate people and, and tend to go up in value over time, not just tracking inflation. Anyhow, this is the carbine, so what can I tell you about it? Uh, the action is excellent. I had it in pieces, and I had the 601 in pieces, and I was going to do one of those videos that I do where I show you the guns kind of like uh, an autopsy, but I thought that, 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 that doesn't work this time. Maybe next time. Everything's steel on the ZG. Uh, I look up the dates and things like that, but... I can tell from your notes and letters that a lot of you study that in greater detail than me. Then I start talking about dates and numbers and all I do is show what I don't know. Um, I'm truly a collector and go by like the art of it. Uh, hopefully I know the artist, so in this case it was Berno. Um, oh, some of the younger collectors were writing me, how come it says Czechoslovakia? So. As I wrote you, um, Czechia and the Czech Republic and Slovakia used to be one country. That's also, it's, it's marked made in Czechoslovakia, this particular rifle made in 1957. And it's glass hard. Somebody was telling me that the ZG-47 steel is not that hard. That maybe, I don't know. I didn't test it, but it runs glass hard. It's possible somebody's worked on this. I don't know if this jeweling is original, but it's the carbine model, like I said to you, which I actually prefer. It's, it's fantastic. It's got a barrel band front sight, barrel band rear sight, everything, like I said, steel, 
it's got the dovetails on the back and you have to buy these special scope mounts but they're common I think everybody makes them and these are not rifles um, how to compare them when you buy a lot of guns these days they're shiny and everything is perfect on them and some of them are so beautiful you're afraid to take them hunting uh, Bernos have never been that way they and there are a lot of Soviet and Russian guns that have that same character that if there's a mark on them or something imperfect um, that's kind of just the nature of hunting and, and even collecting people are always saying I've got a gun I inherited and it has a bunch of safe kisses on it is that a big deal well maybe to somebody you know meticulous but not to me and not to most of the hunters and collectors I know anyway getting back to the rifles themselves so dovetailed uh, safety on the bolt this is simple operation some people say that this is not great and you should replace it with some other kind of safety and I I don't agree just leave the gun as is it has a wonderfully styled now this may sound silly but I think this is one of the nicest trigger guards that any factories come up with and the shape of the trigger and the shape of the floor plate uh, the stock is designed in such a way that the sights are instantly lined up that's another thing I've talked to you about this before if you don't use the metallic sights it's fine um, then you can use uh, make use of a Monte Carlo comb because you'll be looking through a scope which is up here uh, depending on the rings you buy but I I actually hunt a lot just with this rifle as you see it not this very rifle but with rifles with just the iron sights so this one is one of the best for alignment and I'm sure that's a deliberate thing um, the trigger itself again I'm probably not a good judge of triggers uh, they're all fine when you train yourself and get used to the trigger that you're using on whatever given day. Um, everything else will be very familiar to you all. The bolt removal, um, the, the bore, somebody was asking me, you know, is it cut rifling? I just don't know. I, I, I use the same research tools as you do. Maybe I know a few more collectors, but we don't know everything. And I don't know whether it's cut rifling or whether it's a button rifling or hammer forged. It's um, it's hard to tell. Again, the checkering is good. It's serviceable. It's it's not the finest checkering, which adds to the appeal of this rifle. This is a rifle that you could buy and use for hunting and add a mark or two, and no big deal. It carries on. I don't even mind this recoil pad, and this is a yeah, this is Packmeyer. Um, it doesn't matter at all. It makes the rifle more practical, actually. So that's the ZG47, and those of you that think my opinion means something, excellent, excellent rifle, right up there with the pre-64 Model 70. Um, a lot of people demand that I make a judgment one above the other. I, I mean, I don't see the utility of that. It's hard for any rifle to beat the pre-64 Model 70. I don't know what steels they exactly used, but... These are so slick, and actually the ZG47 feeding system and the floor plate and such is, reminds me a lot of a pre-64, but the stock is definitely better, and yeah, I mean, this is a really nice rifle. So that's that one, and then the people were asking me, uh, how do you compare these with the newer 601s and 600s and so on again? Uh, so th th this is the... This, came after this 47 which was sort of between 55 and 62 again you'll know better than me um, I'm just a collector <laughs> but I like the 601 a lot it has the dovetails it has the safety on the receiver so a little different and um, the bolt release is simplified it's at the back of the bolt here back of the receiver uh, some of you will not recognize this trigger system so this is a set trigger and you know except that it's straight which makes it look
quite unique right away. A lot of people pick up on that. Um, doesn't this remind you of the, of the trigger that the Savage introduced decades later, where you have a release in front of the trigger, or a Glock for that matter? Now those triggers are crescent shaped, this is flat. But the concept is there, that you pick up slack. Anyway, it's a lot of talking. Uh, Bernal 601, these are all, by the way, minute of angle or less. I could stand on a range, which isn't easy for me to do because of where I live. But I do get out there, and I usually have a lot of rifles. The, all three of these, well, the most accurate is that pre-64. But it's, it's, it's not really fair because it's somebody rechambered a 243 into that unusual Wildcat cartridge. Uh, but the 601, extremely accurate. If I didn't say it already, um, it, it has the dovetail. It uses the same scope mounts as the ZG47. You can see stylistically it's quite different. And I think and I hope you agree it's fair to say the ZG is has better fit and finish than the 601 and the rest of this series. There was the Fox, which is the small action, came out in 222. I think I showed you one in 7.62 by 39. And then the Magnum action, which I, I have in 458, 416 Rigby, 375 Holland and Holland. That's a big, magnificent action. The actions are all properly made and hardened and steel. The finish is a little coarser, like I said, than the ZG. But these are, you know, details that maybe are apparent to everybody or maybe apparent to collectors only. Uh, this rear sight is not original. I don't know where the rear sight went. I think it. I think somebody took it off because they maybe had a scope on here and the bell objective was too big. So you can see how it slides. That's because I... I had to hand file that into the dovetail and uh, it takes a little bit of work. But uh, the reason I leave it on here the way it is, is I'll only stake it in place at the range after I sight it in, which I'll try to do this week. Um, the floor plate release on the 601 is here, whereas on the ZG it's here on the trigger guard forward. It's hard for the camera people to go back and forth. That's the floor play release. These are obvious things for most of you, but not all of you, and so I say them anyway. Um, and then the stock design on this one, well, it's a little bit misleading because I put that high rear sight, and I don't know if the factory sight is that high, but it has the Monte Carlo comb, so probably most of you who would put a scope on here would prefer this this stocking because you're, you'll get better, you know, what the people call cheek weld, uh, which really just amounts to the contact you have with the stock when you're sighting. Again, you know all this. Uh, excellent stocking. You know, these Bernos, when have they made a bad rifle? They're, they're all excellent. And um, accuracy, you know, more than sufficient for all hunting purposes. I've never seen one that didn't shoot in any caliber or any model and I, you know I've had lots of them. Uh, anyway before I go on and on and on um, I hope that covers the guns properly so 601, 308 if I didn't say it that ZG's in 30 out 6 and if, if you happen to find one and you say well the one on the video was different that's because this one is the carbine which makes it very quick. Um, now you'll lose some velocity, but I don't care. And if I didn't say so, that attaches right into the island. I think this one does not have that feature. So your only anchor points are through the action. And what this all adds up to, you'll have to decide, but highest possible marks in gun making to the ZG-47. And I wouldn't change the safety. Uh, it has a look to it, and, and anyway, does anybody trust safeties? It's just something that should be on the gun. I hope I didn't talk too much. Um, maybe we'll take them apart. There's all kinds of stuff inside these, which is quite interesting. Uh, but the set trigger is a nice feature. This one doesn't have. Anyway, 
I'm lost in thought and talking. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, please subscribe. Uh, it's crucial for the ch uh, channel to have su subscribers. And if you can join me on Patreon and Instagram, all the better. And um, I keep going until somebody stops me. Thank you very much and take care.